Welcome to jobskillshare.org. If you're thinking to advance your career in IT, then CompTIA Network Plus Hands-On Lab probably is the must lab you should really take. And I'm going to explain all of this lab in detail. Basically, this is a new lab from our practice lab and the number is right here, the 007. This is a new one, got released. This lab is released in 2018. And you can see this is a 26 hours of hands-on practice and it says intermediate basically anyone with the entry-level skills can can start with this because that's exactly what you will need after the help this type of things you know after ticketing systems resetting passwords and things like that uh, you know troubleshooting computers now you're going in a little bit more advanced in a way that you want to move up and this is why I suggest this lab why why or the server lab is that yes servers like Microsoft servers or CompTIA servers are great labs they're they're really cool but those are specific but when you go to the interviews people are not going to just ask you questions about the servers they're going to be asking questions some of the questions that we already know it's more like theoretical but you need to know uh, how does it work in a in a physical environment you know how do you see these things in action for example explain the structure of OSI model and this you have some type of you know like theory explained in here but then there are some labs that are these type of things are explained in a, in a in a in a practical way like opening a, a, a network adapter and then explanation of that that what layer this is on and all that kind of stuff so as you can see the outcome of this lab is advanced in a way that people when you go to interviews and if you specifically you're going to network engineer or system admin or junior system admin positions usually they are going to ask you questions about the IPv4 and IPv6 setup and this is where you have the ability to do that in this lab so this is what it basically is I'm going to just take you to the practice lab where when you get these labs this is how you will see everything as you can see this is a very practical labs so this is the one that I'm talking about and I'm going to explain the, 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 the older ones too because they're also really uh, you know powerful in terms of your learning so if you click on the the one the new one as you can see in this one you'll see the introduction to OSI model and this will explain in the beginning like some of the theory and stuff like that but then it will jump into like you know practical stuff and again configuring IPv4 and IPv6 addressing uh, why am I going to go through all this? The reason is that because when you go to the interview, these are the questions they're going to ask you that what layer do you think this is on? Uh, these are the type of questions. So when you do this lab, you should be able to answer those type of questions that are related to OSI and TCP type of, you know, theory type of uh, questions. Now, people will definitely ask you, do you know how to configure IPv4? Uh, they will give you some subnets and stuff like that or IP address to break it down and things like that. This will really help you practically to answer that question. Then, as you can see, network management diagram symbols and documentation. This is very important for a system admin because this is what you do. This is your job that whenever you get something new like a PCI network or some security to projects, anything that you get something on more bigger level they're gonna ask you to draw something raw diagram or someone will come to your network and try to do scanning and and they will talk to you these are more like vendors you will need to know how to do uh, you know Visio or any other um, network diagram thing so this will answer those type of questions the rest on this these three things are network services and protocols these are extremely important also if you click on it it will tell you like you know how do you troubleshoot ICMP uh, you know how do you uh, understand the ARP all these type of things are uh, like these are terms so of course people are gonna probably ask you or quiz you what do you mean by ARP or, you know can you explain that a little bit more um, if, I, if you see this let's say let's go to the third one and here you see configure port 23 from for telnet for SNMP these these are kind of like a a well-known ports that people are going to quiz you in the interview so why not practice this hands-on and that is the main key in this video make sure you remember this this video is about you know um, taking out the interview questions out of these labs use it and then you know just think about it what can they ask me about the SNMP or what can they ask me about the FTP so while you do these labs make sure you keep that keep asking this question to yourself so then when they ask you 
this lab will come to your to you immediately and you should be able to answer it with really uh, in an easy way even if you don't have experience at least you can explain that you have done the whole lab on this specific question yes i have done the ftp configuration i did use this cool lab and talk to them you know try, try to do more conversation with them and going down right now os updates they're import, uh, very important also network vulnerability people are going to ask you what do you mean by this so then you can explain whatever that is inside so maybe spoofing exploring anti-phishing and some other things that you know you have learned in other courses you can talk about network vulnerabilities in that way installing hyper v firewall i mean hey everybody knows virtualization is important people are going to quiz you about the vmware stuff and in here you have ability to do the hyper v installation which is kind of like similar to vm uh, vmware so if you are good at hyper v you're, you, you're good at explaining the virtualization in hyper v people are not going to be like you know just tight on vmware now vmware is a little bit more used in more than hyper v but you know that's still this is a still plus point for you dns i mean if you don't know how to configure a DNS and you don't know how to uh, troubleshoot DNS issues or a DHCP or how to set up DNS server, then I'm not sure how you're, how are you going to manage or how you're going to get away as a system administrator because this is something that you're going to be dealing with. That is your job. As a system administrator, you're really, really kind of like that's your core job right there because you're going to get a call about, uh, hey, we got a new site. Can you add this to a DNS? Hey, we got a new um, uh, IP address. Can you name it this? Hey, we got a new application. Can you put this in the DNS entry? Hey, can you change the old D DNS entries? Can you delete this one? Can you make sure it's working correctly? All that kind of stuff in DNS. That is going to be your job on a day, not on a daily basis, but at least sometime you're definitely going to get come across this type of stuff. As you can see, it goes down a little bit more in details about like you know bottleneck and log management log management why is it important because people when you are working in in an environment uh, you need to know how to monitor systems you will be asked to provide logs because if something happens then you should be able to kind of you know get the logs of that systems or whatever you're dealing with at that time especially in security areas you know they are very tight on logs and people are going to definitely ask you to combine or centralize all these systems logs even rdb connections when somebody logs in you need to know who is logging into what systems vendors and all that kind of stuff and then troubleshooting connectivity with network utilities I don't, I don't know i mean um if you don't know these basic commands right here then uh, like i said these are pretty core and and when you're applying for these type of positions that are higher than a help desk then you are going to be dealing with this type of things because you really don't have any other options you just have to kind of fix the issue so knowing this is very critical for your job for your stress level for you to grow in this uh you know career so another thing is VPN, uh, of course, VPN, so many people use VPN technologies. You really need to learn how to, you know, install VPN on a server level and on a client level and then different type of technologies. There are more than, you know, one VPN systems There are many. So you should be able to do these labs also. A lot of people use load, load balancers and um, honestly, when you can talk about load balancers or switching or routing in your interview, that is going to make you look really cool because they know what you're talking about. That is a little bit more than help this stuff. So that's a plus point and that's where you're going to grow. And you can see the rest is just like configuring SNMP and, and more uh, VPN stuff. And then on the bottom, you have more like a vulnerability scanning stuff so now this is a new one this is a brand new lab and i think you guys should really really look into this um if you uh have the library access that's cool because you should be able to get all these labs um in that library access now why did i say the old labs are really cool too because if you look at it there are going to be some things that are not covered in the new one so if you look at it you can see there's some old stuff like ARP and ICMP is covered in that one too like for example this one you know um, understanding network protocols HTTP HTTPS so in in the new lab you may cover some of the new stuff and in this lab you may cover some of the things that are not covered in for the new exams so this is why I say that these labs that you're doing right now uh, in old or new one they're all really really important 
because you may uh, you may learn something really advanced in one system in one uh, in one lab and then you may learn something in another lab so I would definitely recommend people if if you're moving into the system admin positions then try to take the all these three labs finish it you will learn so much you, so much hands-on so much interview questions will be answered by these by doing these labs and then you can move on to the server plus one uh, and you know more like you know advanced ones right there I hope this video is uh, beneficial in a way that you can use these labs and and you know write down some of the interview questions for yourself from these labs and then you should be able to answer that in your interview thank you so much and I'll see you in a different video